All right. Thanks for joining, guys. And uh, for everybody out there, thanks for showing up. Hopefully, uh, we do this without a hitch. Um, it is, you know, technology. And um, since everybody's, you know, kind of at home and not, uh, you know, they're, they're live streaming everything like Netflix and Zooms and everything, things may get a little shaky around here. But um, we'll do the best we can. Hopefully, you guys can hear us. And hopefully you can see us. And what I'm going to do right now is uh, present um, a little deck that uh, we put together that basically tells you a little bit about us and what what you can hope to get out of joining gig economics. So here goes. All right. So what we got here is um, our first slide, which is just gig, gig economics. And and you know when we first thought up this idea, it was before the pandemic. So we were going under the guise of uh, you know escape from cubicle hell and create the life you want. Things things are a little bit different now because uh, your job may have escaped you from cubicle hell, and now you're sitting at home. But in any event, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, so what what we're going to cover in this um, in this event tonight is what gig economics is and how it came about, and that's the what. Uh, we're going to talk about origin stories of the founders, that's the who. Um, we're going to have uh, an invitation at the end, and that's the how and the where. And this live stream covers the when, as in right now. So, what is gig economics? It's a term that means the study of the gig economy that has emerged over the past few years. So you're probably asking, what's the gig economy? What, what the heck does that mean? And to give you a clue, you can look at the bottom of the slides and you'll see uh, some of the gigs that you can do um, in a gig economy. That is just six. You can, you know, there's, there's hundreds more. So in a gig economy, temporary flexible jobs are commonplace and companies tend toward hiring independent contractors and freelancers instead of full-time employees. A gig economy undermines the traditional economy of full-time workers who rarely change positions and instead focus on a lifetime career. All that is about to change. There's two key words in that uh, slide, uh, previous slide, temporary and flexible. So think about that. Gig workers do not have or expect a career. What they seek is freedom to create their own schedule and their own work. They seek work that may be more fulfilling than a, typic than a typical job without the headaches of a nine to five job. So let's dig a little deeper. You know, this is not your grandparents' economy, though it may seem so since they lived through a Great Depression too, which I think we're in again, and I hope I'm wrong. Um, even, but even before the pandemic, the writing was on the wall. There aren't any gold watches anymore, nobody's getting pensions, and people don't have jobs for life in this country. Some facts. Prior to COVID-19, 30, 36% of the US workforce worked in the gig economy, and that's you know the Ubers, the Lyfts, freelance, Amazon delivery, internet marketers, you name it. 401k plans have taken over from pensions, and odds are, you know, since the pandemic and, and everything got shut down, you've probably lost at least 25% out of your 401k if you had one to begin with. And the sad fact is employers care more about their shareholders than their employees. And there's a reason for that, but it's, and it's not all bad. In fact, they're legally bound to. They have to serve, they have to maximize shareholder value. That's in their charter. Globalization has opened a new world and destroyed industry and individual businesses alike. But there is an answer. Start a gig and start it now. But how, you might ask. And this is one of the overarching concepts that we're going to focus on in gig economics. And that is, number one, start with where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. You are unique, just like everybody else. <laughs> um, you have skills. They're probably not unique unless you're that guy who wrangles alligators with one arm. You do have experience in something. You may even have expertise. 
Your life experiences are unique. Nobody's had the life you've had. And if you're an expert in your field, you're probably one of just a very few. So you're pretty close to unique there too. However, the intersection of your skill set and experience is, is undoubtedly unique. The trick here really is to com combine your skills, experience, and technology into a unique revenue generating venture that positions you as an expert in your field. Simple, right? <laughs> um, so your mission, if you choose to accept it, is number one, brainstorm. What, what are you good at? What skills, experience, and technology can you bring together to solve a problem remove some pain or give pleasure to somebody that is unique enough that nobody else is doing it. And then you need to put together a plan. How will you do it? How will you sell it? Who and where are your customers? And make sure you write it down and share it with somebody because that makes it real. And the last thing is fill in any gaps. There are going to be things you don't know, you know, but again, start where you are, use what you have and do what you can and fill in any gaps you identify with partners, training or tools. So now I want you to meet Callan Don, and uh, I'm going to put him back in the stream so that you can see him and you can hear him. So take it hey, away. Callan. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Callan. I've been a lifelong entrepreneur and, you know, my whole life, I've really had this draw and this pull to work for myself. Uh, I always wanted that freedom to just uh, be able to work when I need to, work when I want to, work doing what I want, how I want, when I want. And that's something that hasn't ever been realistic in terms of keeping a normal job. Um, you know, I've I've done sales for a very long time. I was successful at it, um, really enjoy doing sales. But there was just always that nagging feeling that I, I just wasn't being fulfilled in a way that I wanted to be fulfilled. So um, long story short, I ended up with a back injury in the middle of a uh, sales career, left me unable to walk for four months. And that started me down the path of exploring uh, eight, online marketing, working on the internet, freelancing and, and gigging. And, and I've, uh, I've done all kinds of stuff in that time, anything from um, working with uh, Mechanical Turk, where you're doing jobs for a, a penny at a time that are small and repetitive, uh, all the way up to uh, what I do now, which which is part, partly the gig economy and uh, managing advertisement. Cool. All right. Let's take it away to Zane. Let me get you in the stream. All right. Take it away. All right. So uh, my name is Zane Miller and um, I would say I'm a born entrepreneur. The joke in my family is that I've had more jobs and gigs than the grandpas had birthdays, right? Um, I I never really understood. I mean, it took me a long time to put two and two together of what I was doing was entrepreneur and just what I felt like doing. I, I was just, I, I was, I'm the youngest of eight kids. Um, I'm an introvert, but you'd never guess. Um, but I was just that latchkey kid who just sort of figured stuff out really, really quick. And then before you knew it, I was already doing the thing and uh, everyone, everyone was just like, all right, just just let him do his thing. Uh, from a very young age, I was the kid who was mowing lawns, um, uh, trying something new. Um, people always said I was always scheming. That's not always a bad word, but I never really liked it. But yeah, I, I always had a plan. I always had an idea. There was always something I wanted to test. There was always something I wanted to try. So um, I, I grew up throughout the, uh, the internet sort of uh, dawning, so to speak. And I quickly found interest in tech and video. Um, I'm a huge uh, video game sort of nerd. And so uh, between being one of those kids who was just sort of uh, pushed on to the performing stage, uh, because I, I had to, I have a lot of kids, um, I saw the pieces of technology and performing sort of coming together. And as Bill was saying before, you just take what you've got and you keep going with it. And so I leveraged what I saw of the, of the spotlight and technology and all those pieces coming together. And I started uh, 
working with YouTube and marketing on YouTube in 2008. And I've pretty much just been building my experience from there, taking all the stuff that I've learned as a kid, as a performer and saying, okay, so if I was going to do this for somebody else, or I was going to teach somebody else, um, I would take them through thus and such. Um, I've helped many businesses uh, create their own YouTube channels, um, sort of uh, come out of their shell, so to speak, and really show the benefits of what they can do um, on the space of YouTube and video. And I want to take that and leverage that because now we're in a whole new world of technology in 2020, and there's always something to learn. And I'm a big proponent of learning through doing and teaching through example. So I appreciate being here and uh, back to you, Bill. All right. Thanks. And now we'll talk about me just for a second. Um, let's see here. Uh, wrong way. All right. That's, that's the fun with technology. Uh, we'll get used to this. Um, so I began this crazy journey in 1996 where I started building websites. I didn't know anything about how to build a website. I mean, the web was brand new for all intents and purposes. Um, I think it was like mainstream in 93 or four. So I kind of got into it early. Um, and uh, so I, I, I learned how to uh, write code uh, in HTML and other horrible tech acronyms um, like PHP and all CSS and all that other junk. Um, I switched to, uh, I switched my focus to e-commerce pretty early on, um, back in 2001, where I learned how to sell stuff on the internet. Um, whether it was eBay, my own site, um, you know, whatever. Um, and then I, I started, I got real serious in building out a niche website and I learned a ton through trial and error, mostly error. Um, and I discovered that nobody knew crap about any of this stuff. And I decided to teach people what I learned on my own. Um, so I, I developed some training tutorials that sold thousands of copies uh, back in around 2010. And that put me on the map with a lot of uh, marketers and uh, business people. And it, it really got me focused on teaching, pe teaching people. And, and this is what I say on, on my own personal website. I teach people how to do stuff on the internet. And that's that's kind of what I'm bringing to this table, um, and uh, I'm I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to be uh, joined with these these two gentlemen who, I think we bring a lot of um, experience and knowledge to the table, and I hope that you all can learn a world of information from us. Awesome. So I started. Um, a website, or I, 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 let me back up. I got interested in the gig economy a couple of years ago when um, it became apparent that, you know, the Ubers and the Lyfts and the Airbnbs and, and kind of those mechanical Turk and all those other things, uh, TaskRabbit, I think was one of them, um, where they were becoming um, more mainstream and, uh, you know, private sector jobs and government jobs, you know, basically jobs, nine to five, so-called, um, were becoming a little scarcer. Um, the workforce was growing, so, you know, the, the job market kept growing as well, but it seemed like there were a lot more people who were either underemployed or um, unemployed or unemployable. And so, Last year, I finally got around to doing something about it, and I, I bought the domain gigeconomics.com. And I put it on the shelf for a while because I was doing other things, just like we all do. And then most marketers that I know have like the squirrel gnat uh, attention span. And I went off and did other, other things. Um, but when the pandemic hit and the economy virtually shut down, two things happened simultaneously. Number one, I decided to do something with the concept because I knew a lot of people were going to be hurt really, really, really badly. And I knew I could help them. And number two, I quote unquote, remet Zane. Um, and I'll tell you, we'll tell you about that story in a minute. And we started talking and, you know, as, as you know, he, he didn't toot his horn as, as much as I'm going to in, in, 
in this uh, presentation and in the future, but he's an expert in YouTube. And that's that's how I got to know him. And he he knows subscriber sequences and he's done his own number of gigs over the, over the last 10 plus years. So he's very knowledgeable in what we're about to teach you. Um, and one thing led to another, Zane introduced me to Callan and here we are. Um, so real quick, I'm gonna um, share the screen again with everybody and hopefully everybody can see this yeah it makes this presentation a little small but um so i think it was 2010 when zane and i met and we met at a marketing conference or a seminar or whatever marketing event and um uh, practical profits right i think it was Something practical like profits yeah, yeah. And, and you know I had never, we had never met before and I was one of a hundred people in the crowd and so was he, but he actually um, was kind of called out um, for his expertise and he was doing something that was really novel back then, which was he knew YouTube and he knew how to make it work and he was running shows and stuff. So he's perfect for this gig. Um, and we kind of went our separate way and 10 years later, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead. No, no I, I just, I, I want to make sure like if, if you're, if you're steering the boat, um, but if you want me to, to, to tack on to anything here, go on, go on. All right. Okay. Yeah. I, I was always impressed with Bill. He was, he's like um, to that, to that end, if we're, if we're tooting each other's horns here, um, I'm going to start tooting uh, on, on Bill here. Cause um, I, the the industry is filled with a lot of talkers and a lot of yeah you know oh yeah i'm totally gonna do that and um for somebody who who sees the potential right i i, I saw the value in performing and doing a good job and uh you know a classically trained thespian right <laughs> so uh when i would see people get on and start making a youtube video or a channel or something like that None of it had to do with any tech or any. It was just like no, 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 no. Focus on what you you're looking at the camera. You're you're talking to another person. That's it. Don't don't think about anything else. Pretend you're having a conversation, and then pretend you have to watch that conversation. That's what we're connecting with. Put technology out of your mind and go right back into the human experience. And that was ninety percent of the work. But that's that's ninety percent of the work. You figure out how you communicate and then you play with the tech after that. So like the, the novelty was, yeah, I can click the dials and do the things, but the, the real power and experience that I realized was the benefit was all of the many years of, of hearing uh, drama teachers and directors being like, no, do it right, right on you over and over and over again. And so what I always noticed was people who, actually understood how to do the work. And that's the other reason why I, I was so inspired by gig economics and Bill's viewpoint is it all starts with your skills, experience, and then technology. And everybody wants to start with technology first. And I think that's the that that's the very first bottleneck that you're gonna run into. What do you think, Bill? Oh, absolutely. And, and the thing is, I used to be afraid of technology until I decided I wasn't gonna be afraid of technology. Because what's the worst that can happen? You screw up. And and you know what? One of the main things I want everybody to take away from, from this event, as well as from any other things that we do, is um, you learn by doing. And, you know, you learn by screwing up, too. And, you know, I look back at people like, you know, Bill Gates, for example, when he was actively at Microsoft as their CEO, and he would give presentations in PowerPoint, kind of like we're doing here. And, you know, he'd be in a room full of, you know, hundreds of people and thousands of people are watching this thing. And the, you know, windows would crash, you know, his flagship product would crash. And it's like, big surprise. Did he cry? Did he, did he quit? Did he, you know, no, he, he kept going. And, you know, I started dabbling with servers and stuff like that back in the, in the late 90s. Um, part of the way I got started 
was more of it was less web stuff and more tech stuff like um i had a business partner then and and we started um a, a, a consulting business and we had no experience in this we just you know we were 20 something and we said let's just do this thing and so we got a couple you know we got a few clients and um we branched out into doing things that they needed that we didn't necessarily know how to do but we learned how to do them um we had other friends in in tech and stuff like that and we would just reach out to them and say hey how do you do this and sometimes they come into the office with us you know during the off hours or whatever when we were doing the work and they do it for us and we pay them sometimes they just tell us but you know the bottom line is you just you can't be afraid of things you have to you know i mean there are obviously some things you should be afraid of like a, a you know if you're camping and there's a bear in your campground and it's a grizzly you should probably be afraid of that yeah he's not but, gentle ben no 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 but you know technology i mean unless it's unless it's a really expensive thing that you have in your hands and you drop it and it breaks, there's nothing that's really going to break. I mean, yeah, it'll break, but you can fix it. Um, so don't, don't, don't be worried about technology. And the, and the fact of the matter is technology is so much better now than it was even five years ago, uh, yeah. But yeah. Especially 10 years ago, Zane and I were talking the other night about, you know, whenever you would just try to download or watch, <laughs> A video you know you'd have that little buffering thing and it would do that for 10 minutes and not to mention that you know the modems were with a you know be dong be dong <laughs> Come on. All the noises and stuff. Would take, would take half an hour to log on to aol or whatever and that's why people yeah. never turned it off but you it, but you worked with it you're like okay if this is what if this is what it takes then you set it up and then you go make a cup of coffee you clean your bathroom you do whatever you gotta do and now it's Watch just like hair. oh that, yeah that, that's that's already happened cool you, now you i just start your downloads on. at night when you go to sleep and then hope it didn't yeah. disconnect before you got up in the morning right yeah exactly. I, I i do i do want to make a point i because because i did sort of stand on ceremony about the point of just like well you gotta gotta get good at being being good um but there is there there comes a point where you get comfortable with it with your your performance and you need to get comfortable with technology, which is why I'm so glad that Callan's here to strike the contrast between, uh, you know, being prepared, but then also embracing the technology you already have, because I mean, come on, look at, look at Callan and then look at us now look at Callan. There, <laughs> there's a difference, but, but my, again, my point is, is that Callan did not, did not fear the, the technology or anything like that. He embraced it and he just kept rolling with it and rolling with it and rolling with it. And you can see how comfortable he is with it because he put in the time, right? So you put in the time to get to, to get comfortable with yourself and your own presentation, but then you have to match that with the technology and be willing to do it. Because if not, I suffered from that myself. I, I, I spent too much time working on the core stuff and not enough of the polish and you absolutely need you need polish. It's important. We're talking about people's, um, it's, it's been brought up a lot of times, but you're talking about the amygdala in the back of people's brains. It's called, uh, it's also known as the lizard brain, right? And the lizard brain just wants to make sure it's, uh, it's safe and secure and happy and polish does that. So yes, work on the core, work on the presentation, work on your diction and pronunciation, but also make sure that you take the time to understand the technology. But that's why we're also here is to help you with that part as well. Yeah, the, the effect of technology just absolutely does not work if all of the underpinnings are not in place already. You know, you can have this, you know, you can have the the best audio, the best video, the best wild background, the all the bells and whistles and animated intros and all kinds of fun stuff. But in the end, if the content that you're bringing in doesn't work. All the tech falls flat on its face because nobody cares about any of that. It's like watching that movie that looks amazing in the trailers, but they gave you all the spoilers in the trailer. And yep. then you're just left disappointed after you paid to go see that movie. This is the same thing. Technology should enhance your skills, not the other way around. And yeah. the other thing you have to keep in mind is 
your customers and and you will have customers if you start gigs they don't really care about the technology you use they only care about the product the end the end result um so i mean i know people who you know sell hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stuff and they do it all manually yeah it's it's you know it, it all it all depends on where you want to play and how much you want to dig into this but you don't really need to load yourself down with a bunch of tech what you need i mean i think what you need is a website some e uh, an email service provider and if you're going to do streams like this you need something like you know facebook live which is native or be live or stream yard which are fairly inexpensive um you might need to print up some flyers or something but to get started you don't need a lot and what you do as you earn revenue you take a portion of that revenue whatever you're comfortable with and you plow it back into the business so that you can buy things to automate and systematize your business that's it exactly yeah you don't you don't buy you don't buy a ten thousand expectation system, you know before you've made a dime that's not prudent but but again you you can't automate and systematize your business unless you're comfortable with the manual process and that manual process is proven and works otherwise you're going to automate and systematize something that's broken and you're going to be pay you're paying for all of the tech to lose money yep yep so Not fun so the tech is to, to me and i think we're all saying this the tech is kind of last not last in priority, but last in execution. Because as Callan said, if you automate crap, you're just gonna have faster crap. That's <laughs> it. That's it. But you're not, you know, you gotta you gotta solidify, you gotta really make um, everything work. And and that's not to say, you know, in the corporate world, they talk about flawless execution. And that's bullshit. There is no such thing as flawless execution. Well said. Uh, there's there's getting pretty damn close to perfect, and you should always strive for getting better, but at what cost? You know, um, many, many companies, even big ones like Fortune 50 companies, rather than go out and buy a bunch of software or hardware or consulting to, to, to make their technology work better, they hire more people because people can do things. You can tell people how to do things. And then once you get the process down, you document it and you can repeat it with high enough success that you're happy with, then you can automate it or semi-automate it. Yeah, that's that's very well said. I, I've i just lost my point. Never mind. Sorry. Moving on. <laughs> um, See, right, right, right there. You can, you can flub and you go, oh, my bad. Move on. Yeah, I mean... You know, when when you're giving when you're giving a presentation, let, let let's say let's say you start a side hustle or a side gig or whatever you want to call it, um, and, and and let me let's back up real quick. If you have a job and you're currently employed, don't quit. <laughs> yeah, keep keep going. You know, we have 24 hours in a day, and I know some of us have kids and we have other obligations and we may, you know, we have a full-time job or we have a part-time job, whatever. You can spare one or two hours that you spend right now watching TV or playing on social media. You could spend one or two hours a day creating a gig and building it out. You just can. If you think you can't, you're wrong or you're not, you're not making the effort. Um, but you can spare those one to two hours, but it's better to keep your job, keep your benefits, um, keep your peace of mind that, you know, you're going to be able to pay your bills. And then the, the side gigs you do are gravy or they're to pay for a vacation you want to take, or they're to put money in your savings account or your kid's college fund or whatever. At the point where you're starting to make the same amount of income with your, with your side hustles or your gigs um, compared to your job, that's when you need to start thinking about, mm, should I quit my job? And I would still say until you're way past uh, e equaling your job income, you shouldn't even, you shouldn't really strongly consider it because 
if you're a monthly nut, if, if it takes you, let's just say, I, I'm going to throw a number out there and it's not representative of anybody I know um, or anybody specific, but let's say, let's say you need $3,000 in net income to pay your bills, pay your rent or mortgage, pay for groceries, pay for the thing, you know, car insurance, all that kind of stuff, all the necessities, food, um, let's say it's $3,000 and you start making $3,000 after, let's say six months, $3,000 a month after six months of, of starting a gig, starting a venture. Um, now you're making $6,000. You're netting $6,000. Why wouldn't you take that $3,000 you're making from your job and plow it into your business or plow it into, you know, part of it into investments or part of it into, you know, college fund or whatever. Making double your income is awesome. I mean, how much better would you feel if you were making that much more in your in your in your ventures? Well, that that comes with a huge warning of don't upgrade your lifestyle to match your new income. Absolutely, never able to that, well said. Yeah, that job. You, yeah, you, don't, you buy, to, don't go buy that new Cadillac because that's the, all your money's just went poof. The, the the fastest way to get out of the job in that scenario is to take a quarter of your excess income and put it aside to start building a cushion and take the other three quarters of it and put it right back into your side gig to scale it faster. Yep. Get, get the technology that you need, get your systems in place, get yourself more reach, more expansion, um, the ability to reach more customers profitably. Um, and then, and, and part it, of that is right up your, both of your guys alley, which is advertise. Which, which yeah. is why I chose, going into that. It, it's an area that I personally struggled with for a long time. And it led me to having difficulties in a lot of the side gigs that I chose along my journey, kind of getting started in the space. Uh, I had to learn a lot of hard lessons when I look back and, you know, the last 10 or 15 or 20 things that I tried failed for the same reason. It's a sign, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you hit a certain point where you can't grow any further comfortably without some type of an outreach strategy. And you can learn new skills. There's, you know, attraction marketing and you know, other ways to be able to, to do that without plowing a ton of money into it. But putting money into it and taking out ads is certainly the fastest. Yeah. Yeah. Provided somebody knows what they're doing. Right. <laughs> That's also helpful, right? Somebody who can actually steer the boat. If you right. don't know what you're doing with it, it's a great way to just lose a ton of money. But and and I, and, and but that, that segues into kind of what we're doing here. And, and one of the other things that we want you to take away from, from this, if, if it hasn't been mentioned already is, you know, we're three experienced people who have been doing this for a very long time. We've had a lot of successes and a lot of failures, certainly more failures in my case than, than successes, but still, nevertheless, you know, I've, I, I kind of fancy myself as a, as a fairly good baseball player. I hit three out of 10. <laughs> You know, you, you fell seven times. That That's awesome. That's actually awesome. Um, but a key takeaway is watch what we do and, and listen to what we say, but watch what we do. And you can use us as a model for getting to the point where you want to get. And we're going to share a whole lot of stuff. We're going to be an open, open book. And we want you to be able to... Um, be successful in the thing or things you choose um, by using our model to, you know, do the planning, the brainstorming, the implementation, the content, syndic content syndication, all of the stuff that we're doing, the YouTube videos, the, the live streams, the Zoom meetings, um, the website, all of that stuff. If you look at the website, just go there for a model on how to set up a website for conversions, for, for getting people to join your mailing list or joining your group, that kind of thing. And we're just starting out. So you're going to get to see our successes and failures with this venture um, live. <laughs> you're going to get to see it live as it happens. And, 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 and tacking onto that, you can, you can ask these two, they'll, they'll tell you, um, an hour and a half ago, I was pulling out my hair because I couldn't get the live stream to work, even though it worked yesterday and the day before. Um, something went haywire with 
on my end, I think, um, and it could have been my end, I think. Um, but you know, an hour or so ago, we got it together and we put this thing together. And I think it's, you know, at least from a, from a presentation standpoint, it looks pretty damn good. And the qualities, the video quality is good. The audio quality seems to be good. Um, but it was kind of, I, I, I was, I was this close to saying we gotta, we gotta pull the plug and not do this. So, well, and, and you know, we, we were ready to go with, with two minutes to spare, I think was the, the, <laughs> yeah. the official, uh, the official timeline here. So it really reinforces the point, you know, we're using a, a tool of technology right now to expand our reach and, and to be able to collaborate and things like that. But if, if Bill didn't have his fun fundamentals down, his foundation, he didn't yeah. have those skills built and comfortable to the point he could do them in his sleep, being flustered like that with the technology, this would be a train wreck. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I was, I was going to say, and to tack on to that, um, something that I have experienced just, um, I, I, well, I, I feel like I've uh, re-experienced it, and, I, and I, I would really like to hit home on this. Um, it's, it's having those skills and experience, like putting, actually putting in that time um, so you have that, uh, you know, uh, Bill, we were talking about it before, uh, just the good old fashioned hard work. Like it, it's, it's the experience you have when you experience hard work and that character building you hear about when your grandpa is just like, well, yeah, hard work, you builds character. And you're like, I don't know what that means. And then you experience that and you're like, ah, all right. But more to the point, uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, beyond that, that character building hard work is finding the right people to work with those you know like and trust i have i my personal experience is just saying hey everybody this is the thing that i've got and just letting anybody and everybody just work with me and that's that that's not a good idea i trust these guys these these guys i trust my business with which is my life because i'm a super nerd like that um but to that end it's not just the technology. It's not. It's, there's there's a whole lot of factors, but we're we're talking about are some very important core factors. It was one of those things where I have been in Bill's place, and there was no one around who gave a crap, and <laughs> I still had to just slog through and build some more character through hard work. But it is really really hard to come back from that. So to that end, finding people that you know, like, and trust to work with, that you trust with your ideas. And be able to move forward because it is very hard to come back from that. I don't know if you guys want to add to anything, any of that. Yeah, I mean, I certainly appreciate. Uh, you know, I know you've experienced what I just experienced an hour and a half ago. I know, I know you have. Um, so uh, we just got a comment saying comments are disabled. It's yeah. a Facebook bug. So I don't, I don't know what that means, but we'll try to figure it out, Shane. Yep. Um, that's Shane, by the way. He's one of my favorite people on the internet. Um, you gotta, you gotta. One of mine too. I had just been checking him out. He seems like a really cool guy. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, but again, that was technology. You know, that's uh, stuff's gonna happen. Stuff's gonna break. Stuff's not gonna work right. It's gonna, you know, I, I'm actually experiencing this every day, multiple times with my kids. We're doing distance learning right now, and. No, we're on yeah. Zoom calls three to five times a day with my various four kids. And I swear, so so you all probably know Zoom had a security issue um, a few weeks ago and where, where people were like somehow hijacking the, 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 the meeting, getting in when they weren't invited and showing like pornographic <laughs> material to children all the, all the horrible things you don't want to have happen and yeah there. yeah so, so so the school so zoom's done their thing school districts have like beefed up security and they make they make you sign in a different way and for the last two weeks they, they've had a new policy on how you log in and i swear i log in to to, to the one zoom five or six times and I don't do anything different the, the fifth or sixth time, but it's successful. Um, I don't know how that works, but today, um, my kid, my kindergartner who's in school, his teacher came on and said, Hey, Bill, um, 
we've worked with the district and and we're going to make this simpler we're going to go back to the way it was just for kindergarten and i'm like uh, okay that's interesting because today was the first day in the last two weeks where i was able to actually log in the way you told me and it worked <laughs> that's how that's how technology works it's crazy um so don't let that don't let that bother you just it's par for the course when it when, when things go sideways it's par for the course that's why that's why you try this stuff out before you go live like this and that's not to say you're going to go live and things aren't going to go to hell in a handbasket i've done i've done the prep work before I, and then I go to a live event and all of a sudden it doesn't work. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 I gotta say, um, uh, like we, we've both been through this, but now, um, I, I think the, the rest of society, the rest, whatever, whatever we see as mainstream is seeing technology for what it is, because you and I have also been through the slog of like, well, it's technology. Isn't it supposed to just work? And you're like, you haven't tried any of this, have you? <laughs> you? You know what I'm talking about, like from about uh, 2006-ish, right about to about 2017, people were like, uh, it should just work. And it was just this weird assumption that if it didn't work, it was the, um, uh, what do they call it, uh, error between keyboard and chair, which is user error, right? Like It was always the I user error. Part. Exactly. Exactly. But now because technology has become so it has such a high adoption rate and has become so mainstream, everybody just turned on their meme machines and they're just like, uh, yeah, technology is not is not as advertised. And so now we've gone through the frustration and now we've got all the jokes and stuff. Um, one of my favorites is <laughs> it's this show sucks. And it's like the boss is like, uh, again, this is a Zoom call. <laughs> 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 but it was a really long it was a really long time before everybody just sort of decided zoom was the thing there was all sorts of different pieces of technology but now zoom's the thing to the point where it's you know it's now a joke but it's because we've all sort of come together in this high adoption rate of technology and i just love it because it feels like hey all the friends have decided to join the sandbox that we've all been playing in for a very long time. It just, it, it feels very welcoming, right? Right, and and what you're gonna find is we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to deliver to you the information you need and want um, through various ways. Um, and, and that means through the website, through email, through the Facebook group, primarily the Facebook group, and, and with a little bit of email thrown in. But we're also gonna deliver um, you know, uh, live streams and webinars using different platforms. And the reason being, we haven't figured out what, what works best for you. And you haven't figured out what works best for, for, for you. And we want you to be able to communicate with us to tell us how you want to receive information. Right now, we're guessing. Um, and, and, you know, if we see a lot of interaction in the Facebook group and nothing, you know, within the emails we send, um, that tells us something. If we see people showing up on the live streams, but not on the webinars, that tells us something. So the, 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 the key takeaway there is watch what's happening, record in your mind, take mental notes or take actual notes, look at your analytics, see what's working. And I don't want to get into analytics yet, but you know, it's a key way that you can use technology to help you figure out what's working and what isn't. We'll get into that in a, in a separate, uh, in a separate thing, but you know, we're going to try different things and you're going to be able to tell us which thing you like best. And that's probably where, and, and that's where we'll go. You know? Um, now I, I wanted to, if, if, I, if you guys are cool with um, me kind of steering this in a, in, in a direction of what next maybe, or uh, maybe, maybe a, a potential point, um, but one of the things now that everybody's sort of come together in technology, I believe now that we have, we actually kind of got to go back a little bit to the point of, uh, and, and Bill, uh, let me know if you think, if you see where I'm going with this, um, start with the, the most basic, basic piece, which is the domain. Yes. Right? Yes. 
right? You you started gig economics because you saw the power of of the um, the cerebral connection, right? Everybody sort of like everybody's heard a gig. They've heard at least uh, if they're in the group here, they've heard about the concept of the gig economy and they understand it to a point. Well, the reason for that is because we saw we saw the breadcrumbs that were being left behind of the concept of gig economy. And if you can see those breadcrumbs before anybody else does, the smartest thing to do is scoop up the, that domain. Go to, not to GoDaddy, no one is a big fan of GoDaddy if you're, if you're a marketer or if you're worth your salter at any point. But if you see the value of this collective consciousness, if you will, of everybody adopting this, this, you know, and, and we're, we're still at the, uh, to use a, to use an overused term, the ground level of that adoption rate, everybody's jumping onto it, but, uh, we had to like, uh, those us old school marketers, if you even want to call us old school, because we're still talking about, you know, some pretty new stuff. Um, but the, the, uh, beginning days of, investing in a domain the dot-com bubble and the dot-com burst and all those other kinds of things that has already been uh, accepted and acclimated we've moved past that but everybody understands what a domain is no one no one really needs to be coached on that part yet they've just accepted it which means right now is another sort of digital gold rush of like okay before you know, uh, when people are like, well, what's what's a domain and uh, you know, what's Google and what's, you know, like you had to explain all that. No one has to explain that now. And right. so you can just say cool domain name dot com and everyone goes, oh, how much do you want for that? Or if, I, if nobody even understands that, if you just start building it kind of like we have, right, watch what we're doing. We saw the value of gig economics dot com. We bought it and now we're building on that value, but it's being built on an agreed collective mindset of like, oh yeah, we understand what websites are and all that other kind of stuff. Now's the time. Now is the time. And it's one of the most basic building blocks of all of internet marketing. Anything to that, Callan or Bill? And just the real value in that um, isn't, isn't even necessarily the website or the domain. Um, although there's some value in, in domains, um, you know, we'd have to get deeper into that in, in a whole session about domains. It's a much wider topic than right now. But uh, in general, the value of, of the domain that you buy is about the execution that's behind yes. what happens with mm -hmm. it. Um, you, you know, the, the content, uh, how it's placed, how it's done, the audience you, that you attract in, in the way you go about doing it is what really builds the value of that domain itself. Right, right. And, and just to, to tack onto that, um, you know, that there are people who are doing what we'd consider a gig or a venture that is, is nothing but they buy and sell domains. And, and you can think of it as, uh, you may have heard of the term arbitrage. You know, you, you, you find a domain, a lot of people look for expired domains that have already had oh. the things that Callan just talked about. They have an audience, they have, you know, they have content, they have a good SEO profile, all that kind of stuff. And they, they, they gobble it up as soon as, so as soon as it's available and then they flip it, they turn it around and sell it. Some people take that domain, that expired domain, buy it, build it up. Some people take that, exp some people find um, domains that are, that are doing well. Um, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're earning a, a regular, you know, consistent, steady income for for the owner and the owner just says you know i'm done with this it's just like any other business i'm done with you know i don't want to do the butcher shop anymore does somebody want to buy it and yep. you say yeah i want to buy that butcher shop you know digital real estate yeah yeah domains are virtual real estate and they're virtual businesses right and um you you can go in and, and make a deal you can have a ready ready-made business you know like everything's set up the email sequence is set up the the, the cross sells, the, you know, the upsells, everything's there. You just buy it. That's one way to do this. Um, that's not the only way to, to, to earn an income, but that's one way. And, and one of the things we're going to talk about at length and probably every time we talk is going to be one or multiple ways in which you can 
you know, start driving some revenue towards your business or businesses. Um, and we're going to have, you know, subject matter experts on um, that will talk about those various uh, topics, which leads to. Do you want to make do you want to make the announcement about the Friday show? Yeah, I was a uh, uh, drum roll. <laughs> Uh, we're we're gonna start doing uh, weekly shows where we're gonna uh, uh, talk about subject matters, but uh, mostly focus on people who have uh, bigger brains on topics that uh, we're not as well versed on. Um, but that's that's a part of the gig here at Gig Economics is um, you no no man is an island. Um, we stand on the shoulder of giants, et cetera, et cetera you can't necessarily do this alone. You start alone, but then I, I believe either through experience or through somebody wiser than you explains, you can't do it alone. You need to work with other people and you need to find other, other people that you know, like, and trust. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing is we're going to find people that we know, like, and trust to save you time. So you don't have to go through um, uh, similar difficulties as we did. And that's going to be the benefit of having a, a weekly show. So, you know, the shortcuts to go through, because honestly, why go through more difficulty than you have to, right? Yeah. And so, so we're going to do weekly shows every Friday. Um, and you know, they're going to vary by topic. They're going to vary by format. They're going to vary by delivery until we get it dialed in and figure out what you want. But also since we're marketers and this is a business, we are going to sell you things. Just, <gasps> I know, I know. Um, Sai, uh, uh, we are going to sell you things. Um, and, and that doesn't mean we're going to push things and these aren't going to be pitch fest. They're not. I hate those. We all hate them. Um, but, you know, we will sell products as affiliates. So we may, for example, bring on the founder or the owner of, let's say, Be Live or Webinar Ninja. And they're going to tell us all about their product, how it can work for you, how best to use it. It's going to be a training. And at the very end, they're going to say, hey, if, and if you want to sign up for this service, do that. And they're going to use our affiliate link. So if you wind up buying that product or service, we will get a small commission for that. You won't pay any more than anybody else. In fact, you might get a discount because we made a deal with these guys. But um, if you buy something, we may get a little chunk of change. Just being upfront. Yeah. Um, and we're not going to sell you anything you don't want. Yeah. No. And, like we said, not. and, and the, the other thing that, that that that's very important is we're not going to we're not going to even recommend anything that we don't use ourselves, and that and that. And we have to, we, and in order to use it ourselves, we have to actually use it, pay for it. And we have to, um, uh, you know, respect the, the service behind the product. Yeah. Well, and, uh, and, and to, to that end, it's one of those things we were, were to, to touch on a point that we talked about before. Don't just see, don't, don't just listen to what we say, watch what we do mm -hmm. and what we're doing is the thing that we recommend, we're figuring out how it works, we're learning by doing, we're teaching through example, and it's not always going to be 100% through these through these broadcasts. Um, again, I'm I am a I am a nerd who likes playing with video video stuff. So is Callan. You'll probably see me pop up in the group and say, "Hey, um, I went through this thing and I learned it the hard way. So let me save you some time. Here's the tool that I'm using, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But Take note of what we're doing. We're taking what we've what we're investing in and saying this is something that you can you can benefit from and we can benefit from it too if you invest with us as long as we let you know. Yeah, we're like that's it, it's a it's an important thing also, you know, for future reference. You gotta tell people if you're gonna recommend a tool and you're gonna get paid, you have to tell people or you're gonna or or you're not just gonna get in trouble with your audience of just saying, Hey, you're gonna get paid with I I, I wasn't told about that. The FCC is also going to be like, you didn't tell people about this. So that, that's a big that's a big thing you need to know. But as long as you understand that ahead of time and you and you do that, you know, let us save you some time. Do that ahead of time and let people know. Then you never have a problem and you're always setting and then meeting that expectation. And that's all anybody ever wants.
Nope, I just dropped stuff. My bad. Sorry. Right. So, so that's all great stuff. Um, we got we've got five, uh, four minutes left. I want to um, share with you an invitation, and so I'm going to make this a little bit, bit bigger so you can see it. But um, let's. I don't know why that didn't. See technical issues. Hold on. Here we go. All right. So what we would like you to do besides, um, you know, commenting on this video, on this broadcast um, and, and telling us how you're watching it, whether it's live or the replay, because the replay will be available within five or 10 minutes of this broadcast ending. But we want to share our successes with you, our best practices and all the experiences we've had with our own gig economy work. So what we'd like you to do is two things. Number one, go to gig-economics.com, sign up for our newsletter. Like I mentioned before, that's one way we're gonna be delivering content to you. The second way, the second primary way is through our Facebook group. So if you're watching this, odds are you're in the Facebook group. But if you're watching this and you're not in the Facebook group, go to the website again, scroll all the way to the bottom of the homepage, and you'll see a big giant button there that says join our Facebook group. And that's where we're going to share a lot of information. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. I want, I really want to help people out. I want to, I want to help. We want to help people, um, you know, start earning some income and uh, with, with these gigs and um, you know, I want to see successes and, I want you to share them with us too, because that will encourage other people to strike out on their own and, and do some of these things. What do you guys think? Highest number that, of success rate, you know, sorry, from, from everywhere, you know, the, the more successful that you guys become, the more successful we become. It, it really puts a, a lot of social proof behind uh, not only what we're doing, but th the theories and fundamentals behind where the economy is headed and what we see being the future of working and working on the internet. Well said. Yeah. What were you going to say, Zane? To wrap yeah, I, I, I think my own tech sort of uh, stumbled on itself because it was quiet and then uh, I heard Callan. So sorry if I, if I, if I jumped in. Um, but I didn't hear anything that Callan said, but to uh, <laughs> technology, etc. cetera. Um, uh, first of all, Mormo, dude, thank you so much for commenting. I love this guy. I, I hope someday we can meet and I can buy you a beer because you seem like one of the coolest people. Um, so again, thank you for, for being here and commenting. Um, but more to the point of what, of what we've been talking about, it's, um, it, it really comes down to, um, I, I believe we've moved past all of this, um, you know, adopting technology, and now we're back into that human element. Work with people that you know, like, and trust. Um, find products that you like. Uh, do things that you enjoy because uh, there are more and more uh, products than you could possibly imagine. So, uh, if you if there's, don't feel like you have to to work on a thing. Um, you can actually. Uh, find your passion. What the people? I, I don't know the exact phrase, um, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, uh, find something that you that you connect with, because if you didn't think you could do it before, you absolutely can now. And uh, we're we're also here to help. Um, take that next step. Um, check out the group. Um, join the join the mailing list because all we want to do is help you help yourself. Right on. Um, and I, I think, you know, part, part of the roadmap, um, we've, we've devised thus far it, uh, includes, you know, some group coaching as well as we'll probably set up some, some calendar time so that you can schedule some one-on-one -on -one or one-on-three, whatever time, yeah. with us, um, to, to kind of figure out what you need to do. So, you know. We're here. You're here. Let's take advantage of, of this this relationship and just go out and join the group and join the newsletter and uh, we'll talk again real soon. Anything in closing, guys? 
Right. W welcome to Gig hey. Economics. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. Uh, like I said, the replay should be up uh, in, in a few minutes. Um, if not, definitely tomorrow because it's late everywhere but here. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.